Four days after making landfall in Florida, it's looking like Hurricane Ian is one for the history books. I've been here 40 years plus. This is by far the worst storm I have ever witnessed. The death toll now sits at more than 130, the highest from any Florida storm since 1935. The numbers of still are still unclear, but we're hearing early reports of what may be substantial loss of life. When Hurricanes Fiona and Ian struck their respective regions, it served as a reminder that even the quietest of years can rear its head. That season ended with a tally of 14 named storms, with eight hurricanes and two major hurricanes. The La Nina from that year has finally subsided, with the La Nina taking its place, which usually results in an active hurricane season. However, NOAA forecasts an average to near above average hurricane season. Would things be finally better this season, or even worse? Hurricane season is now just one week away, and forecasters from the Climate Prediction Center just released this year's hurricane outlook. NOAA is predicting a near-normal 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. Specifically, there is a 40% chance of a near-normal season, a 30% chance of an above-normal season, and a 30% chance of a below-normal season. And some big news, I think, to say that we have our first hurricane in the Atlantic Basin so far in 2023, and it's Dawn. We've been talking about Dawn for a while, right? It's been a subtropical system, and then it was a tropical storm. Uh, and now, just as it's about to fall apart, it reaches hurricane strength for a little bit of time, maybe for 12 hours or so, uh, it's gonna be able to be continue to keep its hurricane status. Let's start talking about tropics. This is something you don't wanna get used to. No activity expected for the next two to seven days. Well, NOAA has issued an updated outlook which calls for 60% probability of above normal activity named storms. 14 to 21, 14 is average, so that's the low end potential is average. They're thinking more like 21 for the potential, six to 11 of those becoming hurricanes and major hurricanes, cat three or above, two to five average would be three.
two-thirds of the state is under a state of emergency, preparing for a major hurricane. Within the next 36 hours, the National Weather Service warns Tropical Storm Idalia will strengthen to at least a Category 3. And once it moves into the Gulf of Mexico over really warm water, there's really nothing to limit that development. Forecast to become a Category 2 hurricane by Tuesday afternoon, eventually a Category 3 hurricane as it makes landfall over the Florida Gulf Coast. It's going to be uh, a major hurricane. Uh, this is going to be a powerful hurricane. We do begin, of course, with the major hurricane slamming into Florida today, moving across several states. The devastation and the real concern at this hour over tornadoes into the night. The flooding is unbelievable. I'm not going to be able to go to work, I don't think, for a couple days. And uh... As we make our way closer to the coast of Africa, it's going to be this area just to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands has a 90% chance of development over the next seven days and a 70% over the next 48 hours. We move on to L. That would be Lee if it becomes a tropical storm, at least a tropical storm. Wednesday afternoon, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandagis here with your tropical update. We're mainly focused today on tropical storm Lee. That's right on the cusp of becoming a hurricane and eventually becoming a major hurricane. We once a category five hurricane just last week remains the largest storm of this year's Atlantic hurricane season with cloud bands stretching 800 miles. Compared to Fiona that we saw last year, this certainly isn't the same kind of strength, although people were kind of anticipating, were perhaps a little bit worried with that so fresh in everyone's minds here on the East Coast. That storm again that knocked out 